Hello, good morning, good evening, and good night, depending, I guess, on who you are and when you are watching this. I had given some thought about what the first thing I should say should be, and I gave it about two seconds thought before I decided that the first thing out of my face should be the glorious gospel of the grace of God. And that is, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel by which also ye are saved. This is in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. The Lord Jesus Christ did everything necessary to save our souls. We know that because we can read. Christ did the work. Um, the gospel that Christ delivered to Paul is different from other Gospels in the Bible, and you know that because you can read. For example, the Gospel of the Kingdom, repent, the Kingdom is at hand, is not the same as what we just read in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, and understanding those differences is what we call right division, rightly dividing the word of truth. But the minute that a person chooses to trust the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, His death, His burial, His resurrection, as not only necessary, but enough for salvation, the moment a person chooses to trust that, the Lord Jesus Christ saves their miserable soul, just as He saved my miserable soul. And that glorious gospel is what unites us who are like-minded in this ministry. It gives us hope, it gives us courage, it gives us patience, it gives us vigilance and strength. No matter what circumstance we find ourselves in, we understand that we're living in a present sin-cursed world um, which operates a, according to the course of this world, the prince and power of the air, the devil. So, with that being said first, we are still giving away booklets. If you want one or more than one for a friend, or for yourself, or to give out to strangers, by all means, send us an email uh, to info at ohiogracebible.com, info at ohiogracebible.com. We do need a mailing address to put on the envelope. It's a physical copy, it's not a PDF. So send that to us and we'll get a booklet on the way to you free of charge. Uh, number two, yes, it's me, and yes, I'm back. Ish. I'm back ish. Uh, we're going to try to work me into the rotation of speakers maybe once a month for a while and see how things are going for me and see how I do. Um, third question Where have you been and what's been going on? Well, <clears throat> for the most part, I've been here. I just haven't been in the pulpit. And um, I want to thank all of you who've sent uh, your warm wishes, your encouragement, your prayers, um, your encouragement. I especially want to thank the folks who just said, where the heck is Steve? That made me laugh, that made me smile. Um, <clears throat> so I guess this is the point in the story where I tell you everything that's been going on for the past few months um, and answer all your questions. But, I'm not going to do that. Um, reason for that is, is if I tell you, my friends on the internet, uh, the internet is a public and forever forum. <laughs> okay, uh, you may take something down off the internet, but it's somewhere on some server someplace. So the fact that I would have to discuss my personal, my private medical stuff on a public and forever forum, I, I'm not, I don't want to do that. Uh, I, I'm just not interested. Uh, despite, what you may not understand is, despite the fact that there's hundreds of videos of me standing here and talking on the internet, I'm, I'm really a private person. Uh, I, don't, I don't even have a social media account. I have a very small circle of uh, friends and acquaintances that uh, that I spend time with. So, you know, I, I just, I'm not the kind of person who puts all of my business out there 
all the time. So I hope you can understand that and, um, and not be mad at me. But I will, what I will tell you is the people who need to know, do. The people who have needed to know what's going on with me have known. We've talked about it. Um, and they've been very supportive, very loving, uh, very caring. And uh, I'm, I'm very grateful for that. The, you know, the folks here, um, you know, it's, for, for many years, if I didn't show up for church, there was no church because there wasn't anybody giving a lesson. There wasn't anybody, you know, studying and getting material together or facilitating the church. And, you know, for me to drop off the radar like this and this assembly is still going strong, that is um, a, a great testament towards the body of believers here. That, um, that are faithful in work and giving and support. And even those of you online, um, you know, you're still supporting the ministry even in my absence. And that's, that's just been fantastic. And I'm, I'm really grateful for that. Um, what I will tell you is I know I make a lot of sermon analogies that have to do with someone or something getting hit by a bus. Um, that's, that's what happened to me late last year. I got, uh, I got hit by a bus. That's what it felt like. Um, so we'll see how I do, work me into the rotation, and see how things go. Um, a little bit more ado. I know it's been a while, so I owe you all some ado. So let's ado that. Um, yes, I do have a glorious full beard now. Uh, there is a good reason for that. In my time away, I have become a rugged outdoorsman. I'm a camper, a camper who goes on campouts. So now being a rugged outdoorsman as I am, uh, I need to wear the uniform. And that would be the, uh, the full beard. And for those people who know me personally, this is a very shocking development in my life and, and basically I could sum up my thoughts in the conversations I've had in my adult life where people would come up to me and say, don't you just love nature? Don't you just love being in the great outdoors? And my response would be, no, I can't stand nature. Nature wants me dead. Do you know all the ways nature is trying to kill me? No, I don't love nature. I hate nature. I want to be inside in my conditioned air, keeping nature away. All nature can stay outside. All their bugs, all their contaminants, all their germs, all their animals, all their predators, that can stay outside. I will be away from nature. So the fact that, <laughs> I, I've said also in the past, the best and safest way to view nature is from a mile away from the cockpit of a plane. That's the best way to view nature. <laughs> Uh, but um, I, I have come to become a rugged outdoorsman. And, you know, think about, in all honesty, think about all the way nature is trying to kill you. What about the weather? Extreme cold, extreme heat, ice, uh, sun exposure, hurricanes, tornadoes, avalanches. What about all the predatory animals that want you dead? Ask some of our friends in Australia how many <laughs> animals want to kill you in nature. Isn't it beautiful? Um, what about plants? How many poisonous plants are there? How many poison this, poison that, ready to irritate your skin? What about your own natural body that can fall apart and give up on you without a moment's notice? So nature, nature does want want me dead. But that being said, in the interests of, you know, I'm at a point in life where I'm counting down the days until my children leave and I become rich. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm counting down the days till my, my children are out of the house. My kids are getting older. And in, in the interests of, you know, spending time and enjoying time with them uh, as much as you can with three bratty teenagers. Um, <laughs> Uh, nature and I have come to a form of detente, uh, as they used to say back in the Cold War. We, uh, nature and I, we still hate each other, but we're being less hateful when each, in each other's company. We're, uh, we've come to detente. So 
That, I think, is very much enough ado. It's enough about me. Uh, I've hopefully answered some of the questions you've had, and you understand why I'm not um, answering all of them. And it's time to get something vastly more important than me, uh, which is God's word, rightly divided, preached according to the revelation of the mystery that Christ revealed to Paul. Uh, one other thing, too. Please help me out uh, when this video posts. It's Thursday night. Um, I forget what the date is, but the video is going to go live Sunday morning. Um, Please don't everybody send me an email. I don't want to have to open my email box and have 100 emails to answer uh, just for time. If you, if you want to say something, just leave a comment on YouTube. Uh, we'll see those comments. But uh, yeah, please don't uh, thank you in advance for not blowing up my inbox. Um, so my plan this week was, this is my wife asked me, what are you going to talk about? And I said, well, I'll just pick up where I left off, one of the series that I was doing. And, um, you know, before I got hit by the bus. And uh, my wife told me I should talk about something else. So, um, yes, dear. Uh, <laughs> yes, dear, you young men learn to say that often and mean it. It will help you have a successful marriage. But what I want to talk about today is this concept of glorying in infirmities. That seemed timely. And if we look over at 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7, we see Paul talking about, he says, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Uh, sidebar, what happened to me was not satanic attack. Uh, this, I'm not Paul. I'm not trying to compare myself to it at all. It's just what happened to me is the vagaries and vicissitudes of life. Anyways, moving along, verse 8, he says, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, Anything you... No. He says, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me." What is that if Christ said no to healing you, Paul? I'm going to glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. What's he talking about? Is it some kind of superhuman pain tolerance? Is that what it is? Is it uh, vastly improved patience among all the myriad distresses? Look what he says. He keeps going. Verse 10, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. I want to talk about that today. A um, couple of different ways that the power of Christ rests upon us as believers, as members of the church, the body of Christ, while we're enduring physical afflictions. Uh, one of the ways is very simple. It's, and you're going to say, duh. Looks like we need a new blue. Uh, <laughs> haven't done that for a while either. But knowledge, knowing things, knowledge is power, as they used to say. And knowing right doctrine, knowing what's going on, knowing what the end is going to be, knowing why things are happening, that gives you power, that gives you strength. Look back a few pages, back to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 14. I'm going to turn this fan off. Second Corinthians 4 and 14. 
knowing, ah, now it's knowing, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us up also by Jesus and shall present us with you. Look at that. You know the end of the story, no matter what. No matter how bad something gets, no matter how painful it is, you know the end of the story. There's peace in that. There's peace when you have hope and you know, yeah, this is awful. But everything is temporary. Everything is temporary until I'm raised up by Jesus and presented with the body of Christ. Look at verse 15. For all things are for your sakes. That the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Everything in this life, no matter how bad, no matter how painful, no matter how sorrowful, no matter the turmoil that you feel, everything is temporary. And if you're a member of the body of Christ, paradise awaits, not that, but heaven awaits. Our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So that's one way, knowledge, and, and knowing that we live in a sin-cursed earth, knowing that we have sin-cursed bodies, knowing that this world operates according to a course that is devilish. Knowing these things helps us. It helps strengthen us. It helps give us resolve and courage and patience. But another way that the power of Christ rests upon us is through none other than God the Holy Spirit. God the Holy Spirit resident in you Look over, please, at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 and verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage, again, to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may, yeah, easy for me to say, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the Southerners, Paul the Southerner again, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So God the Holy Spirit, bearing witness in you, in your spirit, strengthens your spirit. And the more of God's word, rightly divided, that you get into that, you see no matter what happens, as the verse said, though the outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. So those are a couple of ways um, that we can find strength and help glorying in infirmities. But what I want to focus on with the rest of my time, and this isn't going to be a terribly long lesson my wife told me to keep it short, and she's always right about everything. <laughs> Let's go to the Paul's Best Life Now chapter. Uh, that would be 2 Corinthians in chapter 11, and Paul talks about how um, he followed Joel Osteen's advice and everything went great for him. Uh, we, could, we could pick up in verse 27 in that chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 
in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak, and I am not weak? Who is offended, and I burn not? Here, watch this next verse. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. What? If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmities. Look what he says next. He says, essentially, God is my witness, the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. Whoa. <coughs> Pardon me. So Paul is appealing. Sorry, it's a little bit hot in here, folks. The air conditioning was off when I got here because it's during the week and it's a little bit warm. So Paul is appealing to the Lord God Almighty as his backup that he really means what he says. If I'm going to glory, I'm going to glory in my infirmities. God who searches the hearts of men, knows your thoughts, knows your motivations, will back him up on this. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. Why? Why? How? How do you glory of the things which concern mine infirmities? How and why do you glory in things about your infirmities? You know, I can understand enduring hardness as a good soldier. I can understand all that are going to live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. I can understand that. I can understand patience, long-suffering, hope during infirmities, you know, taking the long view that all of this is temporary. And, but glory, if I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. If I could quote our current president, who has the best job in the world. Every day he wakes up and somebody tells him he's president. And he goes, oh, oh, oh really? Oh. If I can quote him, come on, man. How do you glory of the things which concern mine infirmities? Well, Paul answers the question right here in the context in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Look at verse 32. In Damascus, the governor under Aretas, the king, kept the city of the Damascenes with a garrison desirous to apprehend me. You may have a question. How many soldiers are in a garrison? The answer is as many as are needed. A garrison depended on the size of the city, how many people were in the city, how many buildings were in the city. But a garrison was as many soldiers necessary to do the job. So this governor, wanting to please the king, brought in enough soldiers where he was sure, we're going to get this Paul guy. We're going to apprehend him, and I'm going to give him to the king, and I will please the king, and I will get maybe favors from the king. So a lot of guys out looking for Paul. What does he say next? And through a window in a basket was I let down by the wall and escaped his hands. So he, he says there, I'm going to glory in the things which concern my infirmities. God is my witness. I'm not lying. And then the very next example he gives, his case in point to demonstrate glorying in his infirmities points to a case where he was helpless and hopeless. He was stuck. Those soldiers were going to get him. And what happened? Other people who loved and served Christ came and helped him do what he could not do on his own. How are you going to let yourself down out of a basket, out of a window? I mean, I suppose you could. But he was stuck. He needed help. He had soldiers looking for him under orders of a governor for a king. 
But the people came and helped him. Other people who loved and served Christ got the job done. They got the basket, got the rope. They scoped out when the patrols were coming by and when the soldiers weren't looking probably. Found a good window, found a spot. We can get them out here and they won't see because they're changing. You know, Whatever happened as far as the, um, <clears throat> the circumstances, these people got the job done. They got Paul out. They got him to escape and move on to get something done he couldn't do on his own, to move on and keep preaching the glorious gospel of the grace of God. And here we are today, still preaching that same gospel that Paul preached, that those people helped him get away so he could preach and tell others, and they tell others, and they tell others, and here we are 2,000 years later. That's glorious, isn't it? That's something to give praise and thanksgiving for, isn't it? Christ working in others, helping another person working for Christ to get something done he or she couldn't do. That is a way to find glory in infirmities. The body of Christ working. Glory to God. Glory to the power of Christ working in people to accomplish things that would otherwise be impossible. That is what I've seen here as I've sat on the sidelines watching other members of the body do what I could not do. Um, and you know, one other side blessing I did want to mention is I haven't just gone to church for 15 years. And it's really been refreshing, refreshing and a blessing to me to just go to church, to just me be a member of the body. Um, that's been one, one side benefit. But talking, I know you're probably thinking about you know, the people who have been doing the sermons and, and going up on YouTube. But I, I want to talk first about the people you haven't seen, uh, people who are not in the pulpit. You know, everybody contributes something here. Um, you know, some people donate money. Some people donate their time and work and do jobs around here. Some people are, you know, the encouragers, the, the lovers and the encouraged people. Uh, there's people that clean toilets. Uh, there's people that do the weeding and mow the grass and take care of the grounds and, you know, work to get the snow cleared in the winter. It's, it's, it's a team effort. And uh, you, in the online audience, you only see the big mouths of the team. But there are solid members of the body of Christ who are here and that we're grateful for. They just don't do the pulpit work. Um, but, you know, you could argue that some of the best people on the team are people that never stand in front of the camera. It's funny, you know, I. My job, I work from three different offices. And um, when I'm going from one office to another, I have to pass by the church. And I can't tell you how many times I've driven by. And I'm usually about 50 miles an hour while I'm passing in front of here. And I glance over, and there's people here working, cleaning, taking care of the grounds. Nobody asked them to. There's no schedule. There's no brow beating and you all really need to help out around here brothers and sisters they just do it they see it needs done and they do it and that is the body every joint fitly joined together the members of the body helping each other and working together to get the job done that's glorious and you know they're out out here working. Nobody's looking. They're not getting any amens. They're not getting any likes or comments on YouTube. But they're just here faithfully doing the work, and we're grateful for them. And that's glorious to see members of the body doing that. Um, the people you have seen, the people who have been in the pulpit. Um, you know, we got one guy, Jim. Uh, my understanding, he'd never preached a sermon before. 
Uh, he watched something like 200 hours of me on YouTube before he came here. It's kept his sanity, shockingly. <laughs> but uh, he'd never preached a sermon before. Here he is stepping up and braving the nerves and preaching Christ to this assembly and whoever listens on, in the world on YouTube. That, is that not glorious? Is that not something we can glory in my personal infirmities about? I think it is. What about Mike? You got a guy who had preached before, uh, but is suffering from Parkinson's pretty terribly. I'm sure you've seen it on, on the videos. You know, we try to hide some of his shaking, but he can't hide everything. But there he is stepping into the gap and putting out sermon after sermon after sermon. And he's exhausted and he's done. As soon as he's done speaking, you know, we got to help him down sometimes. But here he is giving his all as his outward man perishes. His inward man is being renewed day by day. And he's serving other members of the body while he's doing it. Is that not glorious? Is that not something we can glory in infirmities about? I think it is. You got my uh, rotten younger brother, Keith. <laughs> He had to step into the role of, of not only preaching and teaching more, but uh, emceeing and helping organize who's doing what and when. He's never had to do that before, and he's got a new job that's hard and taking up a lot of his time, and he's going through and, and making these things happen and facilitate church still running while I'm not doing it. That's glorious. But more than that, you know, for a long time, I was it here. I was the only one talking. I was the only one teaching. I was the only one preaching. It was all me. But think about how many things that Mike has said or Jim has said or Keith has said, angles that they look at things, truths they see in God's word or examples or teaching of doctrine and reproof and instruction and righteousness that they had in their viewpoint and angle is something I would have never seen or never noticed. But in my infirmity, that viewpoint got out. That got transmitted to the marketplace of ideas. People have seen it, understood, been blessed by things that they have said and done in the pulpit in my absence, in my infirmity. That's glorious. We can glory in that. Another thing, you know, just a, a side benefit, you know, I talked about spending more time with my children. Um, but my wife, um, you know, I've spent much more time with her and spending more time. She's, you know, she's wonderful. She's loving. She's giving. She's incredibly intelligent. She's very beautiful. <laughs> but just for me to have more time with her and us, that's been glorious. And I've spent more time with my kids over the past few months than I have in years. Um, it's been a tremendous blessing. You know, I joke about their bratty teenagers, but they're turning into decent people, and I really enjoy being around them. Um, that's been something I could glory in my infirmities. So what I want to wrap up with is, you know, I, I understood the doctrine before. Uh, I read it. I believed it. I thought about it. I understood it. But now I've lived it. So there's a, a bit different perspective now between knowing it and practically living it that uh, I, I hope came through this lesson. And I can report to you, shockingly, God's word is true, and every man who would say something against it is a liar. Um, so yeah, God's word is true. Let's finish up reading the passage one final time. 2 Corinthians 11.30, If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. In Ohio, Steve got hit by a bus last year. 
the church, the body of Christ, stepped up, pitched in, helped, got the work done, did things Steve would have never done, um, helped people and ministered to people in ways that Steve never would have, and that's glorious. And I glory in my infirmities through that. Thank you for watching. Thank you for an advance. For not blowing up my email, please, please don't blow up my email. Uh, just leave a YouTube comment. That's good enough. Thanks. I, I always feel um, obliged to respond to every email that comes in, and that takes up time I don't have. So thank you uh, again. And uh, to those of you here in the live room, uh, I hope you have a good Sunday. And uh, I thank you for your presence and your prayers and your encouragement and uh, just being overall kind to me. Thank you.